to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. I don't pray that any arm robber will steal your car. But what if he steals the car? What is the key? So God continues. Look at what you are doing. He gives you a candle and he says keep sweeping. And you are sweeping from one meeting to the other. You are sweeping. Sometimes you say, God, I'm tired. I've been sweeping for 10 years and I've just found four keys. God will say a time will come you will find a bunch in one place. You will not always pick one by one. There are times when you, you will see many keys in one place. Let me tell you, I submit to you, this is what I've spent my life doing. I'm like a spiritual archaeologist. Show me the keys. What are the keys to the anointing? I know I need this for ministry. I need this for life. And he says, hold the light and keep sweeping. You sweep from Genesis to Revelation, you start again. 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 You don't sweep once. Listen. So while you are sweeping, you will find a key. Sometimes you will not know that what you are looking at is a key till you come back to sweep again. All the keys don't look the same. Listen, listen to me. Please listen to what I'm teaching you. It is not, it is not every key that appears as a key. You will look at some keys and they don't look like it. And the Spirit of God will say, pick it. When you see the kind of door that this key will open, you will know. Let me tell you how you prepare for life. You hold your keys. And then when you begin to walk, you will see people who went ahead of you standing before certain doors. You, you thought they went ahead, but there they are marking time. They only open two doors out of 50, and they are standing. And God says, now remember the key I gave you in 95. Bring it out. Open this door. Remember the key I gave you in 2001. During your retreat, I gave you a small key. Now, this is the small door that the key opens. Oh, step by step, you lead me, and I will follow all of my days. First step. been given unto you to know to know the keys of the kingdom this is what we do business with in this kingdom the keys our fathers who are gone ahead of us are called fathers because of this when you check them some of them the keys they have they can't hold it again they have looked for bags and when they see you sometimes they look at you and say i know this door i saw it before when i was 27 i saw the door let me tell you how the key looks like so when you read their books and listen to them that's what you are doing they are helping to show you the key let me tell you how satan cheats you sometimes he makes you think the keys you hold are not keys and you throw them and the thing is when you throw them if you are starting with god you will go back you have to remember where you threw them and start sweeping again koinonia hear me you may not have the car yet but you have the key you may not have the house yet but you have the key man of god hear me you have not started the church yet but these are your members hidden in the keys that you hold Listen, 
this is a very ancient secret that God taught me stay stay on my word don't just be educated in terms of knowledge that pops up learn it I remember when I found the law of encounter wow this is the law that controls the power of God I remember when I found the law of honor it blew my mind the master key there are, I will, ah, why did I go ahead of myself? Because I will show you that there are master keys. When you don't find some keys, you can use some keys to find the ones you are missing. Yes, sir. They are called master keys. Master keys. Master keys. You find these keys. And sometimes, the door that will open is the door that your child's life depends on it's not every door that relates to you directly some doors are the keys that will feed your family some doors are the keys that will preserve you this is what god gave joseph he said joseph take this let me tell you this look at me those of us waiting for god to just bring physical things to bless you i like you to be matured and think like a believer Thank God for miracle a lot. But if that's all you are waiting for, you are not thinking well. This is it. I commend you. I Look, he's, he's teaching you. He's saying, look, stop wasting your time. I hand you over to God and to the word of his grace. Number one, it is able to build you so that you are stable, immovable, unshakable. Then number two, you will find keys here and you will pick them up. You will get to some of these doors and find people who were standing there before you were born. They are still there. Standing at those doors and knocking and knocking. And here you come from nowhere. That's how you show forth his praises. Because many of them will be saying this door cannot open. We've been at this door from 1951. And here comes O warm Jacob, empowered by light. And you turn it. It may be an old door, but you swing it open. A time will come when they notice that you have mastered the art of opening doors. Then Gentiles will come to your light. You will no longer look for them. Listen, this is the cure for complex. This is the cure for complex. No amount of good clothes, good hair, good anything can give you what this will give you. The real secret of confidence is the Holy Spirit living in you and the dexterity of the spiritual knowledge that you hold. They may persecute you, but let's get to a door. Keep talking while we get to a door. Keep bragging while we get to a door. Keep making noise while we get to... Keep mocking God. Let us just get to a door. Every mockery ends when you stand before a door because only a key opens that door. Some of you are giving diligence to what you are doing now and you may not know what you are doing. Listen to me, my brothers and my sisters. People may laugh at you and mock at you. You've been in Koinonia for five years. You have nothing to show. No job, no husband, no money, no, no ministry, no business, no nothing. And sometimes you feel guilty. You have the keys. You have just not reached the door. And so you continue moving. And then one day, when you open that door, when God is ready to announce you, he can fast track 10 years of your life by keeping you on stage. And you say, son, turn the key that opens the door to the anointing. And on that day, those who knew you will say, from whence did this come? And you say, I found a key. God gave me a key. From that one meeting, you may never rest again with the open doors that come. Open doors are only open because of the keys that open them. They that walked in darkness. It says, arise from the depression. Lack of light can bring real depression. Not just medical depression. A state where nothing works in a man's life. But many of us ignore the keys and we are chasing shadows. 
if only my uncle gave me five thousand i will never beg again if only um i wear a nice cloth they will think if only i do this and that and god says look 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 you may be in that one room but carry keys Jeez. Koinonia, this is what God is going to be doing these seven days. Keys. Some of you threw some keys you had. And God is going to be bringing you restoration. More than restoration of a property or restoration of a this and that. This is the real restoration. The keys of the kingdom. Let me tell you, fear a man who has held this. There is no power there is no enchantment there is no devil that will throw such a one you keep watching that man your eyes will only keep going higher because of the power of this there are families that do not have even one key they are not born again listen to me from traditional worship this is where they stand father does not have a key mother does not have a key sister does not have a key there are some of you you want to get into ministry no key i'm called i'm anointed they poured oil on my head but were keys given to you you just get up and your first assignment requires 10 keys and you stand there stupefied with no keys you are not ready for life when you do not have keys no matter how you think you are ready listen while we prepare to start tomorrow you are going to have to cry which key don't i have be honest and be sincere tonight's meeting is a charge have i found the key to the grace of god have i found the key to the favor of god have i found the key hallelujah you can hear like like Ima was sharing there was a key that he found so when trouble came they would have killed that person for nothing and he engaged that key don't wait until they give you a report before you start checking and then you say ah i don't have the key is someone challenged tonight brothers learn this key life is harsh let me tell you sincerely i don't mean to discourage you what gives ease to life is the keys that you hold what betides a man that steps into life not holding any key and i will give you the keys of the kingdom I search for these keys and I continue to search for them. And when you find them, they are life to those who find them. They are life to those who find them. You need diligence. You need diligence. My brothers and my sisters who are going to pray, you need diligence. The keys are not just at plain sight. Sometimes you may need to search and search and search and search and search and lie down there. There are times that the Holy Spirit will have to be the one to come and say, look, turn your eyes, look there. That's the key. Some of these keys cannot be found by the eyes of men. It will take the Holy Spirit to open your eyes. For this cause, I bow my knees. Ephesians chapter 1, please give it to us. And verse 17. He's praying for the church. Ephesians chapter 1. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, Paul is praying, the Father of glory may give unto you what? The spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. 18. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened some versions say being flooded with light that you may know that you may know that you may know that's the key that you may know because what you do not know will keep you where you are forever 
you would think that life would just move you forward automatically you will never move forward automatically not in ministry not in career whatever it is even if there are attacks there is what you will need to know for your victory victory will not just come if it would just come like that some of our loved ones would have been free step by step you are leading me and i will follow you all of my days step by step you lead me and i will follow you as i travel for meetings and i see the wonder working power of spiritual knowledge and the anointing of the holy spirit i am grateful to god but sometimes i ask the question what if i didn't have the key do you know someone will die if you don't get this key and that someone may be you it may not always be someone around you arise shine arise shine give god glory john chapter 1 and verse 6 the bible says there was a man sent from god his name was john it says the same came for a witness verse 7 that he came to bear witness to the truth are we together now and that all men might through his witness believe all men might through that witness believe there are people who will never believe in Jesus until they see your light. I've been preparing myself for these seven days. Lord, what do I not know? Thank God for what I know, but I need the one that I do not know. If you have 30 over 100, you got 30, but you failed. You didn't get zero, but you didn't get enough to pass. So ignore the 30 and focus on the 70 even if you have 80 over 100 you see in this kingdom it is what the 10 sometimes the one key you don't have can rubbish all the other keys that you have one key hezekiah was at the point of death chapter 38 of isaiah the word of the lord came to isaiah the son of amos go and tell hezekiah to put his house in order he will not recover from the sickness a real prophet and hezekiah said man of god i honor you i obey you you can go and he turned his face where you know what to do you can listen to people and say i've heard you may god bless you when you close the door you pick your keys where is it where is it where is it there is a name ah blind Bartimaeus. he had been trying many things but not the key people will pass and he say help me wicked people he didn't open the door one day he learned about the mercy of god and he said come now let that opportunity come as soon as jesus was passing jericho for the last time he no longer said help me he said thou son of david have mercy the moment jesus had that mercy he said, ah the cross the cross mercy because when you call mercy jesus must stand mercy. what should i do for you that i might see and that was it that man would have died there thou son of david do you know when to call him jesus and when to call him the son of david do you know what occasion necessitates thou son of david have mercy on me I want to walk in exact knowledge. I want to walk in knowledge, spiritual knowledge. Worthy, worthy is the lamb that was slain and he has redeemed them, us now, unto God. He says, I, I beheld and I saw a lamb that had been slain. Weep not, he said, for the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, is worthy, qualified to open the book and unlock the scroll it says and when i looked i saw a lamb that had been slain having seven horns 
and seven eyes, seven eyes, seven eyes, the Spirit of God providing for perfect revelation. Seven eyes, seven eyes, seven eyes. Apostle, when will I rise? The day the light to lift you comes. Will I rise in August if you want to? Will I rise this April if you want to? Will I rise in May if you want to? The choice is yours. Your addiction to his light is what culminates to your rising. Please hear me as I preach to you. Time will never change anything. It will take light. The entrance of thy word give it light not just knowledge light and then understanding to the simple hallelujah something happened to me today that almost brought tears and i said god how many people may never 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 be able to experience certain dimensions of your hand simply because of this light that they do not know do you know many times when i'm praying truly speaking i think in the last one month my prayer life now i don't even know what to say again many times i just kneel down and tears just come out of my eyes thank you thank you for knowledge thank you for knowledge thank you for knowledge thank you for taking away ignorance you for taking away ignorance separating me from darkness it's the power of God is someone willing to pray tonight Lord I'm tired of where I am I don't want to lie to myself again I'm tired of this realm there is a dimension in God that he seeks to bring me this can't be it God is so much bigger than this. Oh, this can't be it. God is so much bigger than this. One more time. This can be for you. God is so much. Listen. Was it not ignorance that caused Cain? If Cain knew how to do it well, he would have gotten it. Cain did it, but he did it wrongly. God is no respecter of persons, but he will respect his ordinances forever. There is something we do not know. The Bible says the Lord is nigh them that call upon him. Until you have a broken and a contrite heart. Say Lord I have seen this and I thank you. But open my eyes in this area. Is someone desperate to cry tonight? Open my eyes. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. chapter 3 and verse 4 please give us an amplified it's a popular scripture here you know it let's start from verse 3 Habakkuk chapter 3 from verse 3 and 4 it says God coming from Teman you know and the Holy One from Mount Paran it says and 
his glory covered the heavens and the earth was full of his praise verse 4 very powerful scripture it says and his brightness was like the sunlight rays streamed from his hand and there in that light was the hiding place of his power god's power is hidden in his light remember the teaching last week his divine power has given us all things but that divine power comes at the instance of the light so grace and peace is multiplied through knowledge the greater your knowledge the greater your exact spiritual illumination that is the depth and the dimension of power that you will command the bible says to be careful lest what you call light be darkness you can call darkness light for many years please open your mouth and cry and say lord damage darkness from my life drive it far from my life drive it far from my life Take away darkness from my life. Take away darkness, oh God, from my life. What are you turning to? Listen. Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. Because I'm ready to receive light. 
It's time to rise. It's time to rise with a testimony that everyone will know that this is the finger of God. It's in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. You know, there's more than found in you. It's in you, Lord. I know there's more that's found in you. Fasting is ushering into a new season because of the light that is coming and because of what you will do with it. Your heart must be prepared to receive it. Listen, just one spiritual law that is well understood can turn your life around. 
on my white skin, new one. Look up, please. Number two, unbelief. They had the war just like it says, there remained a rest for the people of God. It says, in that day, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart like they did in the provocation in the wilderness. Unbelief. 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 You hear the word of God and all kinds of contemplations begin to come. Give us Romans chapter 4, please. Romans chapter 4. We are praying. We are preparing our hearts for tomorrow. Romans chapter 4. Let's study Father Abraham in one minute and learn from him the principles that make for true faith. Abraham. From verse 17. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. You are going to be hearing things like this. But the Bible says, before whom he believed, even God who quickened the dead and called those things which be not as though they were. 18. 18. Who against hope? Some of you are going to have to believe and hope against hope. Because the things God will tell you to, to do, or the things God will tell you will come back to life are already dead and have been long dead. And yet God will tell you they will come back to life. He believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according as that which was spoken. Next verse 19. He says, and not being weak in faith, he considered not. This is not a week to start considering. Okay, now that prophecy is coming, that this will happen, let me calculate. If only my uncle called me, no, that one is not faith. He considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. Next verse. He staggered not. You believe now, and then as soon as you share the grace, you are just with someone, and he says, Oh boy, we only said amen. No, even me, God knows I don't believe it. You are staggering. Vacillations of your convictions. You believe this today, and by tomorrow you change but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Lord, I challenge unbelief as a spirit. Every word that is coming from you, I, 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 I obtain the faith to receive it. Lift your voice and... Those outside, please pray. Those online, pray. Receive the faith. number three pride pride the bible says and receive with meekness the engrafted word there is a spiritual quality required to receive meekness pride can destroy pride can destroy you're going to pray and say lord my heart is open to learn i receive the heart of a student in this school of the spirit Teach me. I'm not too proud to learn. Teach me. Lift your voice and pray. system 
they limited God in the wilderness. They limited God by saying, can God make a table in the wilderness? Let me tell you this. There are some of you, please give me this cup. There are some of you, this is what you plan to bring for the prayer and fasting. A small cup like this. Lord, I know you. You are like the man with one talent. You are a hard man. I know you. You are not a giver. You don't have the heart to lavishly give. So I brought a small cup to receive. He will fill the cup. There are other people who will bring a drum and say, Lord, I know you can fill it. There are other people who will buy a host and hang it and say, Lord, I'm plugging it from you to me. Not even a drum. Like plugging it to God and plugging it to myself and let everything that can flow, flow. Even in the good soil, it gave three kinds of results. 30 fold, 60 fold, 100 fold. It is not the sower. It is the heart that the seed fell on. Lord, it must be hundredfold this time around. It must be hundredfold. I will not be blessed on day three, day five, and day six. I will be blessed from day one to the last day. Last prayer point. Lord, as I'm standing in this conference, every one of my family members, I connect through the power of the bloodline. They must be part of this testimony. Listen, listen. If you are blessed alone, you are still not free. You have to pray that they too may be saved. That God will also bring them. He says, for the promise is unto you and your children and your children's children. As many as are far off, even they that the Lord will call. The promise is for everybody. Not for a few people. So you are going to pray. If you can mention your loved ones by name, I'd like you to mention them and say, Lord, they must be part of this conference in the spirit. As I'm standing, I also agree for a visitation for them. I agree for a visitation for them. I agree for a visitation for them. Call them by name. Those who are not born again, this is the week that they must encounter Jesus Christ. Those who are wallowing in ignorance, sincere but ignorant, this is the season, oh God. 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 Are you praying? This is the season. Your voice from the depth of your heart and pray. Shabbat Shalom, for tonight Genesis 21 verse 1 and 2 may this be someone's testimony Genesis 21 from verse 1 and 2 let's read it together one to read and the Lord visited Sarah as had said and the Lord did to Sarah as he has spoken next verse for Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age at when the set time which the Lord had spoken there is a set time that's the key word it's not just that the answer came but that the answer came at the set time he said thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her, yea, the set time. This is the last prayer. 
Lord, I declare that this is my set time. Do to me like you have spoken. Do to me like you have spoken. I declare that this is my set time. Do to me like you have spoken. Do to me like you have spoken. This is my set time. This is my set time. For those of you who travel from far, I'd like you to pray from the depth of your heart. Those following your life, Lord, this is my set time. Do to me like you have said. Do to me like you showed me in the vision. Do to me like you spoke through your servant. Father, in the name that is above all names, we decree and we declare that these seven days will be seven days of fire. Will be seven days of true revival. Will be seven days of a strange dispensing of the mysteries of the kingdom. We call them seven days of strange wonders. We call them seven days of divine visitation. Seven days of supernatural shifts. Seven days of encounters. Let me tell you sincerely, the kind of encounters that many of you will have these seven days will be what you have just had people say they used to have. I have prayed this and I have agreed with God for strange angelic visitations. All kinds of prophetic visitations. And the angel came to Daniel and Gabriel came to Mary. The ministry of angels in this conference that God is opening you up, taking you to realms and dimensions by the Spirit. Hallelujah. We bless you. Lord, we decree and declare, let no flesh be glorified throughout this prayer time. We agree for those who are coming still on their way. And Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus that you will honor yourself, you will honor your name even in this prayer retreat. We commit every session to your hand. And Lord, we pray that it will be profitable in the name of Jesus. We obtain the grace to fast. We obtain the grace to pray in the name of Jesus. We also obtain the grace to receive. We receive the grace for open eyes. We receive the grace for open ears. We receive the grace for an enlightened heart. We receive the grace for performance. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Give Jesus praise. Hallelujah. I want to make the altar call. Up front, there are people here who need Jesus and need Jesus fast. Fast. There are people who are saying, Apostle, all the while, while you were preaching, I, I was just seeing the need for Jesus in my life. I don't want to start this conference without Jesus. I want to maximize every moment. You are here, the main auditorium, the overflows, even online. I want to give you an opportunity. The Bible says, ye must, not may, not if you wish, you must be born again. Born again properly. You cannot start a, a retreat and a revival careless. Your eyes are blind. Your spirit is dead. You need that, that strong opening. And that only comes by salvation. And what a joy. This is Easter Friday. To commemorate and to bring souls tonight like a trophy to his majesty and say, Lord, we present to you this even on this day. There are people here. You want to maximize this Easter period and you're saying, Apostle, 
I want to truly, truly come to Jesus. Or I want to rededicate my life to Jesus. Wherever you are, overflow one, overflow two, overflow three, by the roadside, please make your way. Our space here is slim, but I'd like you to summon the courage to rise and make your way very quickly. There has to be someone. Don't be afraid. Be the first person to summon the courage to come. I believe that somebody is making this decision. God bless you if you are coming. God bless you if you are coming. Don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid. Please encourage and motivate them as they come. You're bringing joy to the heart of the Father even on this day. The devil is a liar. Don't let him keep you down. They will see you and they will laugh at you. That's the voice of the devil. Apostle, I think I'm born again. I'm not exactly sure. Join them. Join them very quickly. If you are not sure you are born again, it's a sign to join them. Will the Lord love me with everything I've done? Yes, sir. Join them. Join them. Those coming from outside, please clear the way for them. Clear the way for them to come. Apostle, I think I'm too old. That's the voice of the devil. I think I'm too young. That's still the voice of the devil. Make your way quickly. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I still believe that there are a few people that God is speaking to that need to come. You are just, you don't even know what your life is about right now. And you are saying, I, I just need my life back in order. Please make your way. Join them. I'm sensing it in my spirit that God is also calling this group of people. Please, quickly, quickly, if you are coming from outside, join them very quickly. Join them very quickly. Young, old, together, join them quickly. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You see, the thing about getting saved is whether or not you truly make that decision, it is up to you. But you can only and will only be encouraged to come to Jesus. Jesus is not a liability to your life. He's not a nuisance to civilization. He said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No man, no man, whosoever cometh to the Father except through me. Praise the Lord. Now, for those of you who are in front, I sincerely salute you for making this decision. I want you to lift your right hand high above your head, sincerely, and I want you to repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus. Join them quickly, my dear. I believe in you that you are the Son of God. Tonight, I have heard your word and I make Jesus Lord of my life. I declare that your life becomes my life and my life becomes your life. I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and I declare that from tonight until forever I am a child of God I belong to Jesus keep your hands lifted Jesus we thank you and we honor your sacrifice even in this season by presenting to you these souls they have come sincerely like trophies we lift them to you in honor of the eternal sacrifice of the lamb we pray that as always you will receive these ones that their confession will truly grant them access to be partakers of your divine nature I declare that the power of Satan, the power of sin, the power of the flesh is broken over your life now and forever. In the name of Jesus Christ, we declare that you are born again, you are sons of the kingdom. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. A big congratulations to all of you. Um, may I please request that you follow the gentleman. There's a gentleman waving his hands. All of you in concert this way, just follow him and... Um, there will be a group of people to receive you.
Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaskade Kata Kata Kata